Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's a girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you enjoyed this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Like I said, my name is Fanny Lungu, and on this channel, we post reaction videos each and every day, and we've been able to do that thanks to you guys so if there's something specific that you guys want us to react to let us know by dropping us a link in the comment section below and we'll do it for you we've got a second youtube channel called funny and jesse and you guys can head there funny and jesse 2.0 you guys can head there subscribe and actually enjoy the content that we put out weekly we've got a podcast called diving in with funny and jesse and we have some amazing conversations which you guys don't want to miss you can find us on itunes spotify podbean this channel or our second youtube channel for the visual we've got a patreon and you guys can feel free to become members and we'll appreciate a big shout out to the people that have subscribed to our channel thank you very much thank you for subscribing liking sharing commenting everything that you guys do we appreciate so thank you very much i hope you guys are doing all right and may you stay blessed a big shout out to the person that suggested this today we're going to be looking at allah changes your date of death for doing this so without wasting time let's get into the video in the Aqeedah of Imam Al-Tahawi, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, we recite, وَنُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّوْحِ وَالْقَلَمُ وَبِجَمِيعِ مَا فِيهِ قَدْ رُكِنْ That we believe in the tablet and the pen and everything that's been settled within there. Now, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, tells us that first there was Allah and there was nothing but Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala. Then Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala created His throne. Then Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala created the pen. And when the Prophet ﷺ says خَلَقَ اللَّهُ الْقَلَمُ that Allah created the pen, he, he says وَكَانَ عَرْشُهُ عَلَمَاء that his uh, throne was settled upon water, that there was a layer of water under the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the scholars they take from that, that Allah obviously had created water before the pen, but we don't have much details yet because the heavens and the earth had not been created, but it makes sense because water is the source of everything as we see later on um, in the discussion. But it comes now to the to the pen. The Prophet ﷺ said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Al-Qalam, He created the pen. What are the dimensions of the pen? How does it look? We have absolutely no idea. I mean, in this world, uh, every pen looks so different. You know, you can't imagine what this pen would be. And is it a pen like the pens that we write with? Allah knows best what it looks like and how it is. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the pen. And the Prophet ﷺ says, فَقَالَ لَهُ أُكْتُبْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the pen, write. قَالَ رَبِّي وَمَاذَا أَكْتُبْ And the pen said, O oh my Lord, and what should I write? قَالَ أُكْتُبْ مَقَادِيرَ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ حَتَّى تَقُومَ سَاعَةً Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the pen, write the details, the decree of everything that will happen and that is, that is decreed until the establishment of the hour, until the hour uh, begins and commences. And the Prophet ﷺ, he said, مَنْ مَاتَ عَلَىٰ غَيْرِ هَذَا فَلَيْسَ مِنِّي Whoever dies believing in anything other than this, then he is not from me. So the Prophet ﷺ said this took place 50,000 years before the creation of the heavens and the earth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already had al-qalam, this pen, write down everything. So the qalam, the pen, which was created 50,000 years before the heavens and the earth, wrote in what's known as al-lawh al-mahfuth the preserved and protected tablet. Allah calls it al al mahfuz uh, because it's protected from any changes and it's also protected from access. No one can access this preserved tablet, not from the human beings, nor from the jinn, not even from the angels, not even from the malaika. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has access to al al mahfuz and so it's protected, it's preserved. Only Allah knows what's within it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He calls it many things in the Quran. Allah calls it Kitab in Mubin, Imam in Mubin, a clear book, so there are no, there's nothing ambiguous in that book. It documents everything precisely. Allah calls it Kitab in Mastur, uh, an unrolled, untouched tablet, right? So it's never been touched, it's never been, uh, the papers are not wrinkled in any way, and of course the papers don't look like the papers that we have as well. It's a very special type of book. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَا فَرَّطْنَا فِي الْكِتَابِ مِنْ شَيْءٍ that there is not that, that there is no knowledge that is missing from that book. Everything is within that book. Even as Allah tells us, even a leaf falling from a tree. Now think about how extraordinary that is. A leaf falling from a tree, at what speed it will fall, what type of leaf it will be, what land it will fall upon, uh, what will happen to it, um, you know, uh, who will pick it up, you know, when will it dissolve? All of that 
has already happened. That could, that's happening right now. You know, you might run over something as you're driving with your car. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed that. Uh, while you're opening a door, um, you might struggle with the knob or you might turn it the wrong way. It's already written in a lawh al 50,000 years before the creation of the heavens and the earth. And you know, we could look at that with a sense of optimism uh, as well. And Imam al Sha'bi rahimahullah ta'ala, uh, he was once sweet talking his wife. And he said, Isn't it amazing that 50,000 years before Allah introduced the skies to the seas, He already wrote down your name next to me? <laughs> you know? So it was 50,000 years before the creation of the heavens and the earth, our names were already written down next to each other. So everything is within Allah al Mahfuz, everything is within that preserved tablet. Everything that would have happened, that has happened, that will happen. And you know, we don't have much about the description of it, uh, except for a, a pretty lengthy narration from Abdullah bin Abbas. Anhu. And Ibn Abbas, anhu, he says that Al Lawh al Mahfuz is preserved in Al Bayt al Ma'mur, which we'll, we'll probably talk about later, inshallah, ta'ala, the, the frequently visited home where the Malaika, the angels, do tawaf. And it's preserved directly under the Arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, directly under the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the seventh heaven. And he said it's made of, of red rubies. And of course, not the red rubies that we see. It's, it's made of a special type of red rubies. Its upper end is tied to the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and its lower end reaches towards the angels. Its script is light and its pen is light. He said Allah glances at it many times, hundreds of times a day, and with each glance He does what He wills. He exalts one who is humble, He humiliates one who is honorable, He enriches one who is poor, He impoverishes one who is rich, He gives life to one person, He gives death to another person, and He does whatever else He wills. La ilaha illahu, there is no God but He. Now that brings about a very important question. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already written everything down with Al-Qalam, with the pen, and if it's all contained in a lawh al mahfuz in the preserved tablet, and everything that was to happen has already been written down, then how is it that we have any role in altering our destiny? How is it that anything can be erased or confirmed? Is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talking about al al mahfuz or is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talking about something else? Well, the Prophet sallallahu he clarifies that in that very hadith of Ibn Abbas عنه, that we discussed, where the Prophet ﷺ is telling him to be mindful of Allah, and he tells him that if the entire world was to gather to benefit you with something, they would not be able to benefit you with anything unless Allah has written it for you. And if they were to, to gather together to harm you with something, they could not harm you with something unless Allah has written it for you. At the end of that hadith, the Messenger ﷺ says, رُفِعَتِ الْأَقْلَامِ وَجَفَّتِ الصُّحُفِ The pens have been lifted, and the pages have dried. So what the Prophet ﷺ is indicating to us is that there is more than just Al-Qalam, there is more than one pen, there are multiple pens. And we find this through the Qur'an and the Sunnah. Allah and the Messenger ﷺ describing to us different types of writing. So for example, there is the night of decree, Laylatul Qadr, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala writes down the decree or causes the decree for the next year to be written down. And the Prophet ﷺ, he mentioned hearing the pens, hearing the ringing of the pens and the unraveling of the pages as the angels were, were writing down on Laylatul Qadr, on the night of decree. And Ibn Abbas عنه, he takes it even further. He says that everything that is to happen the next year is written down that night. Uh, if, you're, if you are going to die that night, uh, if you're going to die that year rather, it's written down. If something, you know, misfortune is going to strike you or something you've been waiting for or anticipating, it's written down that night for the previous year. Then he even says that the names of the people who are doing Hajj the next year are written down on Naylatul Qadr. Also, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned to us the angel that comes to our mother's womb when, when, when we are still just four months. And he writes down the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees, which are our lifespan. So it's already been written down how long you're going to live, your date of death. SubhanAllah, before your date of birth, before you're actually born, your date of death has already been written. Think about how profound that is, how you can't, you know, you will not be able to alter that, right? Uh, Rasulullah SallAllahu mentions, he writes down as well your risk, your sustenance, meaning every single penny that you would earn, every penny that would go into your bank account. Every single balance that you would ever have, it was already written before you were brought in. So don't think it's in your hands. Don't think that you need to rush to do haram or do prohibited things because you know, you're going to somehow get more than what's been decreed for you. It's already been written down for you. 
Lastly, the Prophet ﷺ said, Sa'id aw Shaqi. He's written down as a happy person or a deprived person. And Shaqi is the opposite of Safi, so, uh, which, which means to be full and which, we, which means to be fulfilled. So Shaqi here, the context of it is that he's deprived of goodness, he's deprived of true happiness, uh, which is the happiness of the hereafter. And, and you know, that's something that's, that's very profound as well, that we're already written that way once we're brought into this world. So again, how do we alter that? And then Rasulullah or rather Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions to us, كُلَّ يَوْمٍ هُوَ فِي شَأْنٍ That every single day Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is writing. Every single day Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is decreeing. Now, where does that leave us? Then what's the point of making dua? What's the point of working? What's the point of doing anything? If it's all been written down, you know, the only thing we've established now with multiple pens and multiple papers is that's more that's being written down against us, right? Well, the Prophet ﷺ said that all of that can be changed by dua. All of that can be changed by supplication. Okay, the only thing that cannot be changed by virtue of supplication is a lawh al mahfuz is the preserved tablet. Because a lawh al mahfuz in its writing already takes into consideration what would have happened had you not made dua, and what would happen as a result of you making dua. The records of the angels do not indicate that. So what that means is the records of the angels might say that your date of death is uh, April 1st, 2015. Okay, but then you call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or you do good deeds because the Prophet sallallahu he said that nothing causes the lifespan of a person to increase like his good deeds. So you do good deeds and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He sees that and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala causes your date of death to change. Now the angels' records would be changed. Allah al-Mahfuz would already have your previously decreed date of death as well as the new date of death that came as a result of you making dua or as a result of you doing good deeds. So Allah al-Mahfuz is perfect, it already has that into consideration. The same way that, you know, by virtue of you eating or drinking, you know, you extend your life for another, for another day, or by virtue of you taking this medicine, you overcome that sickness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already takes it into consideration in Allah al-Mahfuz, what would have happened had you not taken the medicine, and what does happen as a result of you taking the medicine. And so dua is spiritual medicine. Okay, dua, uh, supplication, is our spiritual medicine, and nothing is beyond our dua. Nothing is beyond our supplication. Very, very interesting. Nothing is beyond our supplication, I guess, us giving our souls to God and doing good deeds, as mentioned in this, will change things around for us, really. I personally can't change how my tomorrow will turn out because it's already been, God already knows what's going to happen. It's already uh, like a still deal. The only way I can change it, I guess, is by putting on hope in God, trusting God, and letting Him drive my life. I really like better tense to use these days, but yeah, everything was very easy to understand in this video and really enjoyed listening to this. I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. Let me know what you think about the video. What did you get from this? And what do you want to talk about? Your comments always welcome. Um, give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in my next reaction video.